one. I'm going to start my day off by describing some really weird spiders. Um, let's see here. These spiders, there's a hand. Their leg span was about this wide. So, and their bodies were about this big, so they had kind of wolf spider-like legs. Their legs weren't terribly long, and they weren't terribly hairy. Um, their, uh, their little butts were kind of um, oval-shaped, and they, uh, their carapace, their, their, uh, that scary little hard thing that all the bugs have that I don't like, um, was clear. So you could see through their legs, you could see uh, the little joints in their legs, you could see all the little inner workings of their little creepy bodies. Um, their heads were kind of small. Their, uh, they were kind of, kind of skinny. Their little bodies were like, but, um, yeah, they were huge, um, completely clear from a distance. They kind of looked white, but when you looked up close, their, their, uh, their little, little bug skeletons were completely clear. Very big, and, uh, they jumped. They jumped really far. Um, and they were really, really fast. Um, I looked for this breed of spider and I can't find anything, so, um, if anyone knows what kind of spider this is, please let us know. Cliffhanger hanging from a cliff, and that's why it's called Cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, um, I can tell you about that. Um. This is moving a little bit forward in time because this is, this happened during the more extreme stories, but since, uh, you guys really want to know, I guess I can, I can, uh, give up this one. This one isn't that extreme. It just happened in the extreme time. So, as you know, I was interested in witchcraft and I had a friend who lived next door. She was, I think, a year younger than me. I can't really remember, but we hung out a lot. She was one of those popular girls that would play with me when I was at home and she wasn't around all of her popular friends, which I totally get. I don't blame her for. It's just the facts. That's the kind of friend she was. Um, and she was the only one of the kids on the street because there was me, my next door neighbor, the kid on the other side of my next door neighbor, and the kid across the street at the end of the dead end. So there was four of us and we were all girls. But the girl next door to me was the only one who was even slightly interested in the paranormal. So she was my closest friend on the street. Um, we used to listen to uh, Coast to Coast together at night in her house because she was not allowed to stay over at Hell House because her family lived there when my grandmother lived there. And they knew what the house was about. They uh, saw my grandma doing some pretty crazy stuff like moving all of the furniture out into the front yard and putting it up so it looks like a living room in the front yard. Um, my friend was not allowed to stay the night, so I spent the night at her house a lot. But in time, she started telling me that, that they were having some poltergeist activity where they would find their dishes on the floor. And they had to buy all plastic dishware because everything else had shattered. And I thought, Ooh, I'm doing witchcraft. I'm a, I'm a powerful witch, even though I'm only doing baby bat spells with, you know, salt and rose petals. Um, I should come over to my neighbor's house and try to clear it out. That's a great idea. It was not a great idea. Not at all. I'm going to need a part two. I will tell you about my terrible, terrible idea. Sorry, I had to run some errands and drive past Hell House to try and see what I could feel. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But, um, once I went into their house, it was at night, um, I did some little blessings on every room and put, uh, salt in every corner and told the, the spooky things there that they had no right to be throwing their stuff around. And then I went home thinking, oh, I did it, I'm helping, I'm getting rid of spooks. That night, 
we were woken up by banging on our front door and it was our neighbor, her mom, just terrified, absolutely terrified. She had us come over to her house and every dish in their kitchen was just strewn about the floor. All of the, uh, the cabinets were slowly opening and closing by themselves enough to make a tsh noise. Um, the, uh, the microwave was flapping as well <coughs> and turning, turning itself all on and off, even though it was unplugged. Um, my friend was hiding in her bedroom because she had been playing in their basement, which was kind of, uh, redecorated into a rec room. And she said she saw a tall figure of a man in a black suit standing behind her in the window because their basement was like our basement. Métis, are you trying to scare me? That was my husband. Nothing act is actually happening. Um, where was I? You just, you just made me forget what I was saying. Métis still plays with me and talks. My husband likes to play games with me like this. So she was hiding in her room because she was afraid of the man in the basement and uh, all of the things that were being thrown around their house. Um, we ended up hanging out with that entire family out in our front yards that night, just kind of partying, like, little Kansas City people that we are, just kind of tailgating in the front yard so that we didn't have to go back into the houses. And ever since I did that, the, uh, paranormal happenings in my neighbor's house started amping up and reaching the same levels as Hell House. They started hearing the drums. They started seeing, as I mentioned, the man in the suit. Um, they started mentioning something crawling on their stairs. So I accidentally made their house wake up too. That is. Well, now that's something I never thought about. Yeah. Yeah, I do. My, uh, my fear of exoskeletons was vastly, um, not improved, but, um, made bigger, vastly bigger. When I lived in Hell House and started seeing the kind of bugs that you could find there. So, yeah, probably. So today, I had my husband drive me past Hell House again. Um, on the way there, it felt so peaceful and calming, like coming home after a long, long, long time. But seeing the house was strange. I don't think I could really explain the emotions that I, I felt, but I did see a no trespassing sign in their window. Um, lots of kids' toys out in the yard. Um, my grandmother's axe is still in the tree. The tree grew around the axe head, you see, so if your house has an axe head, implanted in the tree in the front of your yard. I am very sorry to tell you that if you live on a dead end with a giant forest behind you, you live in Hell House, please contact me. But, um, yeah, um, driving away from it, I immediately felt sick. Um, my head started to hurt so bad and I started shaking. Um, it was really bad, like, I had to grab my head and keep putting pressure, like, right here, or else it felt like my head was going to explode, um, and I just wanted to tell my husband to turn around, I wanted to go and knock on the door, I wanted to go inside and talk to who lived there, but I know that's just not, not, not a good thing to do, that's, uh, that's following a compulsion, so I did not do that, I just, uh, waited for the headache to go away. We went and got some lunch across the river so that, you know, uh, spirits have a hard time crossing running water. So we crossed the river and got some lunch and tried to shake it off. Um, it was very interesting. Um, I don't really know how I'm going to approach this if this does blow up. Because I really don't want to cause problems for a family that's living there. 
think I'm just gonna leave them alone. I think their no trespassing sign is uh, enough to tell me that they can handle their own. Um, I'm just trying to tell my story. I'm not trying to cause any problems. Okay, things are getting pretty heavy over here in Hell House Town. So I want to tell you something funny that happened in Hell House. You see, it was, uh, it was early high school. Um, I'd been in Hell House for a few years. And I was having a nightmare. I couldn't tell you what the nightmare was. It was a typical horrible Hell House nightmare. And my mom tried to wake me up for school. And when I woke up, I perceived that I was being attacked by a zombie. Like a horrible zombie. So I jumped up in my bed and I grabbed a hairbrush. And I held that hairbrush above my head and I went, ah! And went to smash the zombie in the head with the hairbrush. And I attacked my mother. It was really um, embarrassing at the time, but she cracked up laughing once she realized that I had thought that she was a zombie coming to kill me. And uh, she started waking me up from the door after that because she didn't want me to attack her again because I could have grabbed the multitude of weapons that I keep next to my bed, like my shank and scissors. Thank goodness it was just a hairbrush. I decided to look on Google Earth at the forest behind a hell house to see if I found anything strange, and I did. So, let's have a look-see. I'm tiny, but as you can see, hell house is down there, pointed it out, and I found something strange there, directly behind the house, and then something strange there, which if memory serves, is right along the path that the river Styx took. So, let's look at the next video, the next picture. All right, I'm not sure what this is. Let's uh, zoom in further. All right, it looks like some sort of hole in the ground with a fence around it. If we look at the 3D version of it, it almost looks like something has dug into the ground. My thought is maybe like a, an impact site. Not sure. Here's the aerial view of the hole. From this direction, it looks like it goes straight down. But if we turn it in 3D, you can actually see that there's a lip there. And it turns and goes into the earth. So I'm really not sure what that is or if it's man-made. But it does have a really large fence around it. Now this is the one that really intrigued me. This is straight back... Uh, the way that you follow the river sticks. What the fuck is that? Let's get a closer look. That, that's not closer, that's just from a different angle. Hold on. There we go. That is as close as I could get it, and that is 100%. It looks like trees have fallen directly into that dark spot. Not sure if that's a hole or not. Let's look at the 3D. No, that is not a hole. That is a completely black clearing. I want to go and see what that is. Mm. So there you go. There's a look at some of the strange things I just found on Google Earth behind Hell House. Uh, don't know what they are. You have all of the information I do now. So I was cleaning out some boxes of things that I haven't looked in in years and I found an old notebook from college that has some pieces in it written about Hell House from just a few years after we moved out. And there's a few things in there that I thought might be kind of juicy, so I'm going to read some passages for you. There were many individual spirits of Hell House that I got to know over time. At first it confused me why there were ghosts in a house with no deaths. I have come to learn that most spirits of the house were inhuman in some manner, some kind, some not so much. The first of these spirits that I met, I lovingly named Radio Ghost. Radio Ghost was a poltergeist who enjoyed making his presence known by turning on electrical devices. At first he haunted my mom, and later me. 
The first time I was aware of him was a night in 2003. It was a school night in spring. For my birthday, my parents got me a nice stereo. Just as I fell asleep, it turned on full blast. Scared the shit out of me. Had to always keep any noise-making electrical devices unplugged at night in my room. Radio Ghost had a very specific vibration. He felt playful, in a way. I noticed when I felt sad or sick, there would always be a butt print on the bed like someone was sitting next to me. I once asked him to stand if he was Radio Ghost. The print lifted. Radio Ghost ended up being my friend. Through the whole time I lived there, he helped me in keeping my room a safe space from other less kind spirits of the house. I allowed him to view the room as his in the spiritual plane while sharing physical space with me, in turn for him keeping the others out. In 2009, when we lost the house, I had a tearful goodbye, with radio ghosts that ended with my phone randomly playing a song. I can't remember what song it was, but it was a sappy love song about two lovers parting. I cried super hard. Radio Ghost never stepped out of the house. I never felt his vib vibrations anywhere but inside, so I sadly feel he is a friend of the past. I would love the chance, however, to visit him again. So, there's a little bit more details about our friend Radio Ghost. Yeah, that's kind of the conundrum of Hell House. Um, you would probably imagine something like what the Adams family would live in, or like a castle or an ancient mansion or something, but no, it's just a regular ranch style built in the 1960s house. Uh, one floor, originally it had asbestos siding, now it doesn't. My family replaced the asbestos when we uh, found out that it was asbestos when my grandma was living there. I remember changing it out when I was a kid. Um, yeah, it's very unassuming, which is what I'm hoping will help keep it hidden. Um, the only real thing that it has that is aligned with the actual like horror movie quality of the house is the fact that it's uh, it's on a dead end, third house from the end. Um, and it has that big forest with the walkout basement, but really, yeah, it was just a regular old home. Still is. Um, yeah, uh, when I went to go went to go see it the other day, the the people who lived there had the blinds open in the front the front room, and it was around evening time, so you could see the lights on in all the other houses in their front rooms, but Hell House was completely dark except for like teeny tiny pinpricks where you could see the light bulbs inside their house, and uh, yeah, um, it may look unassuming, but that house has a a pure darkness to it that uh, goes far beyond the normalcy of the appearance of the house. All right, let's do another little funny story from Hell House. Um, this is something that happened to my mom, but I did witness it. It was early high school, and it was early, early in the morning um, in the winter, so it was still dark out, and my mom was starting breakfast, getting her coffee made, stuff like that. And she walked down towards the hallway to wake me up. And something kind of made a sound in the ceiling. And there was a an air conditioner vent up there that had these slots that you could see up into the attic through. So she looked up and screamed, fell on the floor. And I came running out of my bedroom to see what was wrong. And my mom was just cracking up, just laughing so hard. And I look up, and through the slots in the air vent, a black cat head had poked through and was just staring at us. Just a, a black cat head. So we fished down the cat. It was a, a stray that we had been feeding outside for a couple of months, and it turns out that he... He just wanted to come inside, so we named him Sebastian, and he was one of the loviest boys on the face of the planet. Um, he's not with us anymore, sadly, but he was a good cat, and uh, he started his life with us by scaring the absolute shit 
out of my mom. Well, you're very, very welcome, sweetheart. It, um, it fills my heart with joy to know that other people are enjoying this project that I'm working on. It makes me so happy to be able to turn something so traumatic that happened to me into something beautiful. It puts it into perspective and gives everything a reason. Like, why did this happen to me? So I can make something beautiful and I can take you all on this really awesome adventure with me. So in your other comment, you said that you, that you appreciate me, but I appreciate you too. Without you guys coming along with me on this adventure, I don't think that I would be able to move past some of the traumas that I've experienced. Like, I just got home from therapy, and I spent the entire hour talking about Hell House and the horrible things I went through. And uh, he wants to continue talking about that um, in the weeks to come. We're going to do some uh, memory regression with some EMDMR or whatever it's called, that little vibrating machine they make me hold in my hand. And I'm going to play some music that will tie me to the times in Hell House and see if I can't regress back to that and see if there's any memories that I've forgotten. So I'll be able to take you guys on that adventure with me. Um, thank you. Um, I really appreciate you guys and... Uh, I love you. I hope you have a great day.